I'm Bethany Anderson, and you're listening to The Hope Adventure. Welcome to episode 21, Jump. Following God into unknown places can be scary, daunting, even terrifying at times. Have you ever wondered how to navigate the change of seasons or chase after a dream with a lens of hope and adventure rather than fear and analysis paralysis? Listen in and we'll see what we can learn together about the adventure that is following God. After all, the greatest adventure is His presence. On today's episode, we're going to talk about what happens when we face fear in our life. And I hope that by the end of this story, that you will have the faith to conquer any fear because Jesus is the one who gives you that. Are you ready? Let's go. In May of 2006, I was in Interlock in Switzerland hosting 60 international au pairs on an adventurous weekend away. I had been on the same trip two times before with the ministry I worked for. And with each new trip came an itch to try another adrenaline-pumping activity. First, it was paragliding. Then, it was whitewater rafting. And this time, it was canyoning. Canyoning can be described as a sport where one explores a canyon through various means. Rappelling, rafting, floating, scaling cliffs, and waterfall jumping. And yes, it is as extreme as it sounds. That chilly May afternoon, I managed with great difficulty to force my feet into the cold, soggy water boots and the black wetsuit that accompanied my bright yellow helmet and life vest. Fifteen of my fellow adventurers and I then squeezed into a van like sardines for the short ride up a nearby mountain. We unloaded like a parade of circus clowns when we reached the summit and began to tromp through freezing cold water, tiptoeing across the jagged rocks beneath our feet. At the end of this trek, As we arrived at the mouth of the canyon, our guide gave us some safety pointers for surviving this adventure. She said something that stuck with me for the rest of the day. Once you start this journey, you cannot go back. Those words reverberated like cymbals crashing in my ears. Although I was nervous, I trusted the guide completely. So onward I went, turning every seed of doubt into great expectation for a thrilling day ahead. The adventure began by rappelling 25 feet down the side of a canyon wall, where my feet slipped a couple of times on the slick, smooth rock face. After dangling in the air for a while, I managed to plop safely into a pool of swirling water. After that, along with my fellow canyoning crew, I climbed giant boulders, jumped into pools of water, and backflipped off a few rocks here and there, letting the current gently take us down the mountain. For the most part, everything was relatively easy. And yet I felt a great sense of accomplishment. As soon as I had the hang of this canyoning thing, though, everything changed. We climbed up what seemed to be just another giant boulder along the route. But once atop the boulder, I looked out and felt a strong breeze from the wind tunnel carved by the canyon walls. I realized I was now 40 feet above the canyon river, and the only way down the mountain was to jump into the angry pool of swirling water taunting me below. In that moment, despite all I had just accomplished and come through, fear consumed me. My knees locked. I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. All I wanted to do was to scale back up the canyon I had just descended. I've never prayed so fervently for the ability to fly in all of my life. As I stood there in a state of panic, watching the others before me careen off the boulder to their certain death below, I remembered the words of the guide, Once you start this journey, you cannot go back. I had no choice. Allowing fear to paralyze me atop that mountainous boulder was not an option. I had to risk. I had to jump. Even though I'd never been in this exact situation before, my heart knew the all-too-familiar feeling of fear. Fear is a strange, powerful thing at times. Sometimes it triggers in me desires to run away screaming from whatever it is that's scaring me. Other times, it pushes me into this weird, reclusive isolation or makes me want to give up altogether and throw in the towel. Balancing on this giant rock overlooking the rushing river of water below, 
I was feeling an overwhelming combination of all three. I've always loved the story of Elijah, the Old Testament prophet found in 1 Kings 19. The gist of the story is that God had just performed a miracle in front of the people of Israel. The prophets of Baal had built an altar begging their God to consume it with fire. And there was no answer, just silence. Nothing happened. Then Elijah built an altar, which he drenched with buckets of water. And after he prayed, fire fell from heaven and consumed it completely. The people of Israel praised God, and then Elijah commanded them to seize the prophets of Baal. They did and killed every single one, 450 of them in total. In the scene directly following this victory, the king at the time, Ahab, told his queen, Jezebel, all that Elijah had done and how he had killed the prophets of Baal. Jezebel responded by threatening Elijah's life. Considering that Elijah had just witnessed a miracle which resulted in victory for God and the Israelites, one would think he might have a chilled-out approach to this threat, like, whatever, Jezebel, my God is bigger than your bad attitude threat. Oh, but no. Elijah panicked. In fact, Scripture clearly defines this. It says, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. And then the drama escalates. Elijah travels with his servant and then leaves him to flee into the wilderness alone, where he asks God to take his life. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. Essentially, he wants to throw in the towel. Fear is an odd thing, and we are susceptible to its power over us unless we act against it in faith. Fear is ultimately a faith issue. My paralysis atop that boulder exposed this in my heart. Where is my faith? Where is my trust? We all struggle with the fear of something. For me, sometimes it's the fear of standing on a boulder, seeing my life flash before my eyes if I take one misstep. Sometimes it's the fear of sitting at home, staring out at the green sky, praying a tornado doesn't appear. Sometimes it's the fear of saying goodbye to people that I love all around the world, not certain if or when I'll see them again. Sometimes it's the fear that I'll never amount to what God has called me to be. Or the fear that I'll live my life selfishly and make it all about me. Sometimes it's the fear that I'll never be married or have a family of my own. Whatever that fear may be in your own life, I know it's real and I know it can stop you in your tracks. But I also know this. I've had moments of paralyzing fear before and I've experienced victory. I've moved overseas on my own. I've traveled across countries and cities by myself. I've left everything I've known to risk what might lay ahead. I've left jobs that seemed stable and secure to pursue my passions for something else. And in all these situations, God was with me every single time. He never left my side. I had traveled down this canyon with him, and now standing on this boulder, he was still right there beside me. I wasn't going to give in and let fear stop me from what I'd come to do. I was going to complete the journey before me, which required jumping into that rushing river with the faith that God would be with me. The story of Elijah brings encouragement God is with us when we are fearful. After Elijah wanted to throw in the towel, he laid down and fell asleep. 1 Kings 19.5 says, All at once an angel touched him. God counteracted Elijah's fear with his nearness. We see this in the life of Jesus as well. It is the crux of the gospel. Jesus came to touch humanity with his divinity. God also sends his sustenance to Elijah. Again, 1 Kings 19.5 continues with, All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. Can you imagine being awoken in a desert to the smell of warm bread? You've run from fear into isolation and God provides you with the bread of his communion. It's an invitation to come and commune with him. He sees us as we are, where we are, even in our isolation. He reaches into the depth of our need and feeds us. He provides. He sustains. He takes care of us. 1 Kings 19.7 says, 
The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. This strikes me. The angel comes back a second time. Why isn't it once enough? I believe that it's because sometimes we need God's ministry repeatedly before we can understand the provision He's bringing us, the purpose to which He is strengthening us. Our humanity takes over and we want to push the snooze button on life at times and turn our faces away from divine intervention because sleeping off that fear, that boulder before us, is just easier. But God is always sustaining and strengthening us for a purpose beyond what we can see. This is where our faith and trust come in. God provides what we need exactly when we need it and most often when we don't even know we need it. That's the manna in our life, which in original Hebrew literally means, what is it? God's on top of it. He knows what we need before we do. That day, standing on that slippery boulder, pondering the chasm below, I wanted to run back up the mountain or hide in a crevice until it all just went away. All of these options seemed easier than jumping 40 feet into a freezing mountain river to my possible death below. But again, I didn't really have a choice. I'd come all this way, up and down boulders, in and out of cold mountain water. I had to jump. So, with a renewed oomph in my spirit, I stepped to the edge of the boulder and jumped. It was the most thrilling jump of my life. And I've done it a couple times since then. But that's the thing about our adventure of faith. Once you start the journey with God, He loves you too much to let you give up. He always navigates us back to faith in Him. 1 Kings 9.8 says, Strengthened by that food, Elijah traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. Through his nearness and touch, through his sustenance and provision, we are strengthened as he leads us back to the source of our faith and trust, him. Fear takes us away from God, but his perfect love casts out all fear. Just as 1 John 4.18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. God is gracious. He navigates us back to him. I think about Horeb, which is also called Mount Sinai. This was the sacred mountain of God where Moses met with God and a place that represented the history and the source of Elijah's faith. That's exactly where God led him. So here's my question to you today. As you think about fear, the fear that's plaguing you or causing paralysis or causing you to want to run and hide, what is the mountain of God in your life? Maybe it's a season of life where God provided for you in ways you didn't expect. Or a relationship that always points you back to faith in Him. Maybe it's an event that happened where you just know that you know that you know it was the hand of God leading you. Or a time when God surprised you with a job or a promotion or the restoration of a friendship. I believe for you that beyond your fear, there is great faith. I believe that beyond your fear, your mountain of God is awaiting to remind you of his faithfulness, provision, and perfect love in your life. My prayer for all of us today is that we open our hearts to let God draw us back in and restore us back to a place where our faith overtakes every fear. Let's pray together. Jesus, that is the simple prayer today that faith in you, faith in the faithfulness, the goodness, the kindness of you, your character, who you are, overtakes every fear. I just speak that boldly over my friends today. May faith replace fear. I pray that we would rest in your perfect love which casts out every fear. Wash your love over us today. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Thanks for listening to today's episode of The Hope Adventure. If you want to hear more stories, you can check out my book, Kiss My Fish, which can be found on Amazon. Just a reminder, I'm spending the summer working on some really exciting things for you. Make sure you go to my website, jbethanyanderson.com, and subscribe to my newsletter so that you can be one of the first to know when I make my big announcement about what I'm launching. Thanks again for listening today. I pray that you walk away knowing that faith overcomes fear. And it's because perfect love casts out all fear. So think about what that mountain of God is in your life. What is the place of God's faithfulness? And take that with you as a reminder so that you can remember how good He is in those moments of fear. Okay, we'll see you right here again next week on The Hope Adventure. Bye! Today's music has been brought to you by the Blue Dot Sessions.